and his tiny band of lifelong militants decided to wage a war against their own country. This group was founded and led by women, and they are unique in American history. My name is William Rosenau. I'm the author of Tonight We Bomb the U.S. Capitol, the explosive true story of May 19th, America's first female terrorist group. May 19th was a women-led violent extremist group that sought to overthrow colonialism and imperialism, both at home and abroad, formed by a group of well-educated middle-class women in the late 1970s. Many of them had been involved in extremist groups like the Weather Underground. They decided, even though it looked like the revolution wasn't around the corner, which some believed it, that it was still possible and that they needed to devote their lives, really, to further their political aims. And they saw their obligation as being people who lived inside what they called the belly of the beast to fight U.S. imperialism, to support third world liberation movements in places like Central America, the Middle East, West Africa. The members of May 19th were all white, all Caucasians, few men, but mostly women. They teamed up with a bunch of black militants. They were involved in a whole series of bank robberies to raise money for black liberation inside the United States. They robbed a total in today's dollars over a two year period, about $3 million. This phase of their existence came to an end on October 20th, 1981 when they were involved in a botched, deadly robbery uh, in upstate New York, the Brinks robbery, where two policemen were murdered and a security guard was murdered. The women of May 19th had served as getaway drivers. One of them was caught on the spot, Judy Clark. And interestingly, she spent 37 years in prison for that crime and was only uh, released last year. Judith Clark has spent more than half her life in prison, but at the age of 69, she's been freed on parole. Clark was convicted in 1981 of felony murder for her role as the getaway driver in a botched Brinks truck heist in Rockland County. And then the second phase, the women went on a bombing campaign. They decided to target what they considered to be imperialism directly. So they bombed an FBI field office in New York. They bombed Fort McNair in Washington, specifically the National War College. They bombed the Washington Navy Yard twice. They bombed the police union headquarters in New York. And as probably their most infamous bombing act, on November 7th, 1983, they bombed the U.S. Capitol, causing roughly a million dollars worth of damage. They had a communique that they published uh, after they bombed the Capitol, and they said explicitly, tonight we bombed the Capitol. We chose not to kill any senators this time. Some of the members got caught along the way. In November 1984, one of the women, Susan Rosenberg, and one of the men, Timothy Blunk, were arrested outside a storage locker in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. What did the police find inside this storage locker? They found hundreds of pounds of TNT, high explosives, detonation cord, blasting caps, thousands of rounds of ammunition, automatic weapons, fully automatic Uzi rifles, shotguns and pistols with the serial numbers filed off. When the police were moving, these high explosives, which were in very bad condition. I had to learn a lot about explosives and bomb making uh, when I did research for this book. The high explosives were called Hercules Unit Gel Tamptite. And apparently with TNT, you're supposed to rotate the sticks every 30 days. Okay, and you have to keep it in, in pretty good condition. Otherwise, the nitroglycerin starts to weep out. And that's what was happening with these sticks. Nobody had bothered to rotate the sticks. So when the bomb squad from Philadelphia came out, the cops started loading the explosives onto a truck. The bomb squad said, no, 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 we gotta take this in separate vehicles because if this 
a vibration could set this stuff off. And if it's if this single load went off, it would possibly take down an entire building or the Ben Franklin Bridge, which is the, the way into Philadelphia from Cherry Hill. They were arrested. The rest of the group kind of scattered. They were also very good at disguises, wigs. They wore what we call mom jeans. 27 sizes, because Chick realizes that jeans should come in all shapes and sizes. Kind of fuddy-duddy clothes that you would never really pay attention to. They could, they were very, very good at hiding in, in plain sight. But eventually, the FBI, through a variety of investigative means, figured out who these people really were. Most of them, by the end, were holed up in Baltimore. Interestingly, all of them, when they were arrested in various places, were carrying either 9 millimeter pistols or 38s. The 9 millimeter pistols, fully loaded, round in the chamber, pistol in the purse. Okay, so they didn't kill anyone um, during their bombings, but they could have. And they certainly considered it. They talked about assassinating Henry Kissinger, who had been Secretary of State under Gerald Ford and Richard Nixon. They talked about assassinating policemen, judges, prosecutors, enemies of the people. These individuals weren't peaceful protesters. In some of the interviews I've done, people have tried to compare them, you know, today's Antifa to them. And it's like, no, 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 no. These people were serious, professional revolutionaries. Whatever happens, you have a mother. There's a great Simpsons episode where, where Homer meets his mother, who's an anti-war protester and fought the bioweapons lab run by Mr. Burns at the university and then disappeared into the underground. Well, there's my ride. The underground awaits. The voice of Homer Simpson's mother was done by Glenn Close, the great actress, who was also instrumental in leading the campaign to get Judy Clark released from prison. So whatever that means, that's one of the reasons I wanted to, to tell the story is to remind people that political violence is deeply ingrained in our history. McKinley is assassinated. There was a good deal of violence during the years directly after the war. The worst damage was caused when a bomb went off in Wall Street just outside of J.P. Morgan's office. We can pretend otherwise and pretend that we've settled all our differences through peaceful means, but that's obviously not the case. It was nothing like the Civil War, but we have our own homegrown extremists. And today, they're mostly on the extreme right wing, the neo-Nazis. But back in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, they were on the far left. 